Okay. Oh yeah. Black Sun in the Hizzle. Oh, for shizzle. This is what we got at an excellent show here today. We got the lovely Dr. Uma. Introduce yourself, Dr. Uma. Black Sun, it's a pleasure and an honor to be back here again. I'm Dr. Uma Thanabalan. Okay. I am a family physician in Ahmed and a cannabis therapeutic specialist. All right, all right. So, update us on Georgia. What what is going on with the whole legalization of mar medical marijuana? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, well, exciting news. I think you've heard that on um, just this past few days ago in Clarkston was the first city that actually passed a law where if you are caught with less than an ounce okay. of uh, marijuana, uh, you will only have a seventy-five dollar fine, which is huge progression since we last talked. Right, right. And since we last talked also, uh, we do have a limited CBD uh, oil consumption in Georgia. It's not medical marijuana, but it is limited CBD oils with a limited amount of THC in their okay. product, but we don't have medical in Georgia yet. What, what's, what's the holdup? I mean, why, you know, they're stalling. A lot of it is just pure fear. Uh, is what they're saying. They still scared. I mean, we got Colorado. They're doing good economically. California. Everything is uh, there. The writing is on the wall. All right. Um, my God's honest truth is that this is about greed. This is about uh, pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. It's about keeping people ill. It's not about keeping people well. You know, we have health insurance, which is about health insurance when you're ill, not health insurance when you're well right and my honest experience now from working with cannabis for uh, approximately four years now is that it's actually a deficiency if we can look at this plant medicine as that people are deficient in cannabinoids and here is a plant that's natural and has been around for thousands of years mm -hmm. and again we've said it's killed nobody Right, Nobody right. has ever died from this medicine. And uh, it was legal in this country. It was in the pharmacopoeia. And it was prescribed by doctors. Now, let me ask a question. Now, how would, um, I guess Georgia wouldn't respect a medical card from California or Colorado? Right now, no. Oh, so basically they're like, that's no good to us. Yep. You know, you can't bring it here. And this is not just Georgia. This right. is in many states are facing the same thing, that if you've got a card from another state, it's not recognized. Very few states, again, recognize that. Right. And it's also dependent on where you are and dependent on what the circumstances are. But very limited uh, of, of reciprocity of that if you have a card in another state, that it can be used in other states. But this is my bigger concern. If somebody has cancer, right. does the cancer go away? Because you go from one state to right, another. Right, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. You know, does your diabetes go away? Uh, does your hypertension go away because you're from one state to another? My concern is why do we have these laws? Why does it vary from state to state? Does the human body change from state to That's state? That's a good argument, yeah. You know, the United States has issues now that we're saying that uh, we don't have research in this country. Mm. There's plenty of research that's been done in this country. Right. And more so, it's been done in other countries. And does the human body change again because it goes from country to country? And of course, these are non-doctors making these arguments, right? Again, this is also doctors. So, and you bring up a very good point about doctors making hmm. these kind of statements. And I was one of those doctors because I was not taught. Wait a minute, you used to be against the marijuana? Absolutely, I was not educated. Wait a minute, you used to be against the wacky tobacco. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Absolutely, okay. because as a physician, uh -huh. this was a drug that I tested people for. And I, as a medical review officer, people's jobs were lost. Oh, wow. Because if you work and still do That's in this true. country, people are so afraid of drug testing. Yeah. And, you know, people that use cannabis, it's in their system. And even if you, let's say, used it recreationally on a weekend, if you were to be randomly drug tested or, God forbid, got in an accident yeah, and yeah. drug tested, you're going to test positive. Yeah, that's every construction job, every driver trucking job, every... Any yeah. federal job or mm -hmm. any job that is going to drug test you and has a policy. 
So this is not just truck drivers. It could be your average Joe that has to get a job right, and they have a right. drug testing policy. And it's not just men or women. It could be anybody, and it's really dependent on your job and, I and your company. Georgia wanted to drug test people for food stamps, you know, saying if you're on food, you know. I mean, I don't understand the whole connection between this is bigger, testing somebody on. This is bigger. Abyss. Right. It's bigger because it's right now in Schedule 1. And I want to talk a little bit about that because okay. it's right now along with heroin and right. LSD and ecstasy. Oh, wow. Okay, it's in Schedule 1. So when you talk about prescriptions, I can't write a prescription for anything in Schedule 1. I can only write a recommendation right now Okay. In, for medical marijuana, and that's now only in, we've got uh, 24 states, and I think we might have a 25th state might have been added just okay. recently. Uh, but again... This is not something I'm allowed as a doctor to write a prescription for. Right, right. We are allowed to write prescriptions for things in Schedule 2 through 5, okay, and cannabis is in Schedule 1. Okay. And most doctors are not doing this because, number one, um, there are hospitals. They get federal money. Of course, And you yeah. mentioned about why people on food stamps want to be tested. They want to test these because they're saying you're getting federal money. Oh, okay. So okay. this is about the okay. federal dollar. Yes, and yes. if they're saying federal housing, if you're in federal housing, yeah. if you are using this, that they can hold you. I mean, I really beg, I beg people at this point, please understand that the lack of education is what it, the problem is. Absolutely. And as a clinician, I was there too. You know, I did not know that there was a system known as the endocannabinoid system. Right. Just like you have a digestive system, you mm -hmm. have a respiratory system, you have an endocrine system, you have different systems in the human body. Okay. And uh, again, less than 10% of medical schools are teaching this even now. Oh, wow. And this system is evolved over 600 million years from a sea squirt to what we have in humans today. Mm -hmm. And we've known about it. We've actually known that there was receptors. Then we learned that there was actually, that our body produces endocannabinoids, mm -hmm. which means it's within our body. So when we talk about cannabinoids, we talk about what's made within our body, what we get from a plant, and what's made synthetically. Right. And synthetic cannabinoids kill you. Ooh. And We've heard about recently about these synthetic cannabinoids that people have gotten on the street and have killed people because they're made in a laboratory or in somebody's lab, and this is not real. So let's get to the politics of it. Yes. Let's just say, so, you know, because I know you're big on, you know, people registering to vote. You know, if you have the masses of people, and it looked like there is a masses of people moving state to state that afford marijuana for all types of illnesses, who are passing the laws to keep it down? It's the politicians. And this is where I, I make this statement repeatedly. You would not want me coming into your home and doing electrical wiring. Why should a politician be telling me how to practice medicine unless they have medical knowledge? Yeah, but the politicians are supposed to be uh, for the majority of the people. If the majority of the people, what's, what's going on? If they're for the marijuana and then the politicians are not for the marijuana, Aren't they supposed to be going? We're not for... getting it translated. Laws are not being made because the people are speaking. You know, when you've got politicians that are coming up with a list of medical conditions that this medicine should be allowed for, I mean, who are they to have the authority? Do they have the medical authority and the knowledge? So like in California, I mean, how do we even put it on the bill to even be, I mean, I know Georgia had at one time and then so you're saying the majority of the people were against it or I think a, a lot of it is a lack of education so okay. people don't understand it you know there's still that stigma about cannabis or marijuana right. as we call it right and I want people to start calling it cannabis okay and there again this is all the political connotations mm -hmm. this was about politics this had nothing I repeat nothing to do with evidence-based medicine Right. 
It was legal and prescribed and in the pharmacopoeia. And the U.S. government has a patent for cannabinoids. And they've had it since 2003. So mm. you talk about politics and why this medicine is in Schedule 1. I like some answers. Right, absolutely. It doesn't belong there. They said it's in Schedule 1 since 1970 because there's no medical use, that there's no medical research in the United States, and that there's a potential for abuse. The potential for abuse can be with anything. Now, because I know you're a doctor, and you got, I'm sure, other doctors arguing against it. So do you guys, as doctors, have a, I guess, um, I guess medical journal, peer-reviewed documents where you guys can say, okay, let's put all our work, you know, I'm a doctor, you're a doctor, let's put our work against... Absolutely. And if anybody wants to go into PubMed, and that's P-U-B-M-E-D, and that's what physicians and clinicians use yes. to look up research. So if I wanted to look up something and I wanted to see the latest and the greatest research, right. I would go to this uh, website and be able to put in cannabis and see how many research articles come in. There's over 10,000 articles. So the research is there. Right. It's not supported by Big Pharma. Absolutely. Right. Right. Big Pharma doesn't have a piece in this right now yet. They're, they they do indirectly, but I wish Big Pharma would help because this is not about recreating another wheel. This is about taking what we've learned and understand this is a plant medicine. Right. And this is actually thought of as if if I am deficient in vitamin D, you'd say, Dr. Uma, go get some sunlight. Right. And especially people of color, we don't absorb the same amount of sunlight as somebody that's fairer skin. Right. So again, we have a deficiency. You don't say you're a bad person because I'm deficient in it, right? right? So we supplement with that. Now, if you're low on calcium and you're low on vitamin D, then your bones get thinner. Right. So this is a progressive thing. So this is where I'm trying to understand and make people understand that there is a system known as the endocannabinoid system right. and that if you are deficient in this cannabinoids and you supplement i.e. with a plant cannabis this can fulfill what your body needs right and endocannabinoids are basic part of our body system for homeostasis. Mm. It's part of so many things in our body. So you're talking about a direct people directly wanting people to stay sick. That's what it sounds like. People wanting to I keep guess, people ill. Keep people ill. I mean, this is what I'm saying. We are not worried about people being well. Right. Our health right. insurance is covered for us when we get sick. There's right. very little that says go out and exercise and right. stop smoking. That's right. You know, right. they're not paying for those nicotine patches. They're not helping you pay for those other things to help you to get off of nicotine. They're right. able to pay for a new lung. You know, they're able to pay for those other visits. Absolutely right. But we're not helping people to say, hey, you know, go out and exercise, join the gym. There's some insurance companies that are starting to do that. You know, they're saying we'll help you, but that's not the majority. And most people don't understand what the human body is and the importance of keeping it well. well Dr. Um, I don't think, and I, and I agree with the education part, but like you said, when you got the politicians at the end of the day controlling some of the legislation, I think that's where the fight needs to be because, you know, I talk to people in different states and everybody seems to be on the same plane as far as the medical marijuana doing, you know, I mean, you, I know you're giving us the technical term, but people just know that they feel better and they would rather have this than some prescription drug Absolutely. you get from either Walmart or Kroger, mm -hmm. you know, that could have thousands of side effects, you Absolutely. know. Um, but I think what people are not doing, I think people are doing the research, but they're not putting the pressure on they're the scared. The patients are scared. Now, you, we talked a little bit about jobs and food stamps. And now, right. if you if you can't feed yourself and you don't have a place to live, mm -hmm. what are you going to be fighting for for weed? I mean, that's how it's looked at, right? It's looked at as weed. It's not looked at as medicine. We're not even talking about it and the respect that it needs from the medical community. Right. I mean, I have clinicians where my patients, when they come to see me, are scared to talk to their primary care doctors because they come to me as a specialist right, right. to come to get that recommendation mm -hmm. and 
my way of practice is total health care. I'm a primary care doctor yes. in my training, and I'm a specialist in occupational medicine, and now I do uh, recommendations for cannabis, medical marijuana, yet I'm a physician at heart. Mm. And what I'm saying is my colleagues, other health care providers, don't have the knowledge and are alienating the patients. They're able to throw prescription after prescription right. at them, but not to be able to talk to them about cannabis. Because guess what? They get a paycheck from a hospital or they get a paycheck from an insurance company, mm -hmm. which is right. federally regulated. Yes. Okay? That doesn't support the doctor that's talking about cannabis. I don't get one cent from an insurance company. I don't work for mm -hmm. a hospital. I don't work for a university. I work for my patients. Right. So I'm limited, okay? So this is what I'm saying. There's not people like me that can be limited, mm. okay? If you are wanting a paycheck, you're going to work for a hospital. You are going to do what they tell you to do, which is not recommend medical marijuana. But as as... You know, citizens, can we change federal we mandates? We are. Because they're we all, are. Okay. We are changing it. And we know when, when we spoke almost two years ago to now, we've come a long way in absolutely. Georgia. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have people like Sharon Raver and Normal and Peachtree Normal, which we are part of, and advocates that are out there speaking and educating, and patients and their parents and children. I mean, there are people out there doing this. Right, you know, we right. are doing it. You're doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all doing it. And I think the more we do more of it and ask our politicians, and I'm always about... Not ask, demand. Exactly. Yeah, demand. Demand. Like, yeah, they work for us, you know. And this is why I'm saying to people, please get registered to vote. Mm -hmm. Help others to get registered to vote. You know, everybody, if this is the year... If you are committed to cannabis, commit to vote, is what Dr. Uma is right, saying. Absolutely. And I'm telling yeah. that to anybody and everybody. Right. I don't care if it's not about cannabis that you're committed to. If you are committed. So basically you're saying if you're not for voting, you're not for legalization of marijuana. You're not Plain about speaking out. Yeah. And you're not demanding like you're saying. We're yeah. supposed to be demanding. Well, that's the way we demand. Absolutely. We get out there. And, and what I'm saying is, like, I'm not the most computer savvy person, okay? I'm, so there are people that need help. So reach out, get people organized, get community leaders to have somebody sit there with a laptop and find out are you eligible? Get them vote. And then, and, th and that doesn't stop there. You know, get you voted, get yourself, get those absentee ballots. Absolutely. You know, find out how you can make your voice be heard and, and, and ask and demand. Mm hmm. Know your rights. And, you know, people don't realize this. I'm originally from India. I'm proud to say I'm a U.S. citizen, yet I'm now a registered vo voter in Georgia. Mm -hmm. This is where my state home is. Absolutely. And I want to be able to do my part, and all I'm asking is everybody do their part. Right. And that's what it's about. Everybody's vote counts. Absolutely, absolutely. Um yeah, because I know even in uh, <laughs> in Cleveland, shout out to Yanga, they had the opportunity to legalize it there, and they and they I don't know what you know what what it was. It was people not voting for it. As simple as that. People in Cleveland, they could have had it on the you know books and everything, not only medically, but I think it was recreational. They were saying, you know what, here's your opportunity, and nobody voted for it. I think this is the problem that we're facing. People are not executing their rights. Right. You know, first of all, you are a U.S. citizen. You've been given the privilege mm -hmm. to vote. Not everybody has that privilege. Absolutely. And we live in what is supposed to be the democracy. Right. And we are not executing that right. And uh, I, I tell people, you know, instead of bitching and moaning, start doing something about mm -hmm. it. Get out there. Get involved. Whatever little bit that you can do. You know, if it's writing a letter, getting signatures together. Right. And, um, you know, my biggest statement that I always say is reach one, teach ten, right? Once I teach you, please go teach it to ten other people. That's right, yeah. You know, it's constantly, and the three words I say is educate, embrace, and empower. And that's what I do. I educate my my public anywhere and everywhere. I educate people about the endocannabinoid system. I embrace 
cannabis as, as an option for people. And I start out by saying cannabis is not for everybody. Yet, okay. it should be a first-line option, not the last resort. Right, absolutely. And, absolutely. and through this, I empower my patients. You know, I teach them about their health. We take better care of our cars and our homes, our dogs yeah, and our pets than, than we do of our own bodies. That's right. You know, we make sure our filters are changed in our homes. We don't take care of making sure we go and get your physicals done. And sometimes that's important. Now, Dr. Newman, where can um, people, just for the information's sake, get more information on the cannabinoids? You know, are there like... Yeah, Peachtree Normal. You know, okay. if you go to Normal's website, uh, they have wonderful information about it. Okay. And, uh, you know, even if they Google my name, Dr. Uma, okay. and put in cannabis, there's lots of videos that are out there. But we are in the world of technology where Absolutely. people go into the Internet and put in the word cannabis. Or you put in just uh, cannabis and ECS, which stands for endocannabinoid system, if you right. can't say the whole world, but, word. But just say what cannabis is and I tell people this plant has killed nobody it's a plant mm -hmm. that has over 400 different chemicals this plant was meant for us for food fuel fiber paper and medicine that's what this plant was in this world no it's interesting you say food because you know around the country you know you, well, around the country around the world you got all these uh, food shortages coming up, you know, and people trying to genetically modify food. But that's a whole other topic. But you say food. I mean, what what kind of... Absolutely. Let's talk about that. Because okay, this yeah. is... Uh, when we talk about hemp, mm -hmm. hemp is from cannabis. So let's back up a little bit. So cannabis, okay. cannabis means kana and bis. Kana means stalk or fiber. Okay. And bis means two sexes, male and female. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So, okay. Break, break that down a little bit. Okay. So it's a male and female plant. Absolutely. So it's got two sexes in both. One plant can have both sexes. So here is a plant that has all these different properties and food. If the plant was grown, we could feed the world, the hemp plant, which is available legally. You could go to Trader Joe's, you could go to your food stores and you can look up hemp. And you can buy hemp seeds. You can buy hemp powder. There's hemp milk. There's different products that are made right. with hemp. Yes. There are hemp soaps. There's hemp, different things, lotion. There's a whole array of legal things that are out there. One serving of hemp, three tablespoons, has 10 grams of protein, two and a half grams of omega-3s, right. eight and a half grams of omega-6s, 20 amino acids, Nine of them are essential. Essential meaning your body doesn't produce it. You've got to, you've got to take it in. All right, absolutely. And here is this plan. Here is three tablespoons can give you all of this nutrition. And guess what? It's hypoallergenic. So it's easily not giving people a reaction. And it's easily digestible. Right. It helps heal you. We have people whose guts are ill right now right. from the contamination and the foods that we have been consuming. Absolutely. And I mentioned to you food, fuel, fiber, paper, and medicine. This plant was that in this world. Henry Ford in 1930s built a car that was completely made and fueled with hemp. Now you know the oil industry ain't gonna like that. Of they, not. I mean, they're fighting. <laughs> That's why it was taken yeah. over. Okay. And it's absolutely correct. You are absolutely correct. Who were the people that took it over? The Hearst family, mm -hmm. the DuPonts, and who's, who funded those two people? Mm -hmm. Mellon, who was the head of Gulf and all the oil company, right. and then there was two other people, and you know, Rockefeller and Carnegie, who had all the pharmaceutical industries, and then they had one badass guy that mouthed it off for everybody, Harry Anslinger. Mm. These were the six people that changed the face of cannabis. Mm. And you know Saudi Arabia wouldn't be too happy about that either, because you know they're going through uh, some turmoil with their oil. But yeah, that's a topic for another show. Um, we'll come to that next. Oh time. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, we can come to it now. Shoot, we can. We can. I mean, you, you know, you there's so many things that we realized. We were talking about this last night about um, crimes against hum humanity. Right. I mean, this is big, I'm saying. It is. Crimes against humanity. 
I mean, you talk about our food that's spoiled. That's right. Our water that's spoiled, our earth, our plants. Everything is contaminated. Plastics after plastics yeah. after plastics. Everything that we have that was food, fuel, fiber, paper, and medicine was replaced with synthetic, 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 right. synthetic, synthetic. We know from the time cannabis was removed, all the illnesses and the cancers right. Right. that have been created in the world again. Because it's not just what we do here. It's what we do here that impacts everything around us. Mm -hmm. Now, has anybody brought this? I mean, because, I mean, yeah, it, it makes sense. All the synthetics bringing about all the cancers. Nobody's, I mean, I guess. Uh, we know it. We know. We say to people, why do I tell my patients now? Look at what you're putting in your body or not in your body. Mm -hmm. How long is it staying in there? Right. One of the biggest things I tell my patients is, are you peeing and pooping? Right. right? We don't talk about it. Right. We hope. We hope. That we eliminate things that we put in our body. Right. Eventually. People are on so many medications. Absolutely, yes. We're toxic. We're full of it in more ways than one. Mm-hmm. Right. And, <laughs> oh, wow. Because uh, not only are you looking at the medical industry, looking at the dental, too. They, they play a big part. In everything. They, yeah. You know, everything that we put into our bodies... You know, try, and you say about why are our teeth falling apart? Yeah. If you look at our ancestors, they didn't, they had teeth. You look at my, yeah. it wasn't people were all toothless by the time they got to a certain age. We have young kids now that have no teeth. Right. It's because of the sugars and the milk and everything That's right. that we're drinking. And I want people to understand, look at your labels. My son has a general rule. You know, if it's got an expiration date of more than two weeks, it doesn't belong in your home. No, absolutely not. Don't even belong on the shelf. Nope. And, you know, there's wonderful movies people need to watch, like things like um, In Defense of Food mm -hmm. that shows McDonald's and all of these fast foods. Mm -hmm. They're nothing but contamination, that, and they sit in your body forever. Yes. Forever. Now, okay, so let's talk about the fuel part, because I know, you know, they talk about uh, the pollution in the air. What, what, I mean, what kind of... I guess synthetics everything we burn right what are we burning what are we putting into our air plastics papers everything is not biodegradable every plastic that we have we, we are now pushing things but then it's in a plastic form where does that come from plastics polymers fuel ultimately oils everything is from the oil the oils are fractionated to create different parts absolutely you know now this hemp plant this cannabis plant can be fiber. There's over 25,000 products that can be made. And it's biodegradable. Mm. They can build homes. They can build every type of product. So you're saying that, because I know you got hemp oil, so you can, you're basically saying that the hemp can also replace the petroleum products? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We can build cars. We can have our homes, we can have products that can be made that does not destroy the earth, right. does not destroy our planets, and we will leave something for our children. We talk about all of this GMO products, all of that, again, we're trying to feed the earth, but I'm seriously asking this question, are we really keeping people alive, or are we just feeding them now, to keep my them ill? Now, one might argue saying, okay, you know, with the petroleum, you know, you got so much of it. You got the reserve. Is there enough hemp to replace all the reserves in the world? You know, you got Saudi Arabia, you got we could uh, grow Honduras. It. Hemp can be grown so easily. It uses way less water consumption, way okay. less pesticides. It is amazing because all the places where we have radiation, we can heal the earth. But how, many, but how long would it take? to catch up to the reserves in the world. I don't know those exact numbers, and I'm sure okay. next time, if you want, we could get those numbers and okay. we can post. Because we'll, I'm sure that's something they would bring you know, up. Let's get those kind of numbers, and I'll be happy to provide that for okay. you. But we can, I mean, those are the kind of things that is out there. This is not stuff that we have to create, is what I'm trying to tell you. Is I don't have those numbers exactly right now, okay. but it's out there. And it can. It is the solution. I truly believe we can clean the world with this plant 
and provide a safer environment mm. and remove the toxins Absolutely. in the environment. Places where we've had radioactive contamination, they're placing and replacing hemp in any of those places, and it's helping the environment. Mm. It can produce so many products from our clothing, the clothes that we touch. And hemp is one of those things that wears, as, it, as you wear it, it gets better. Okay. It's not things that degrade. And it's a healing property. And this is what I keep saying you about... Know, how is that possible? I mean, everything degrades, right? Everything... But it degrades at a different level. And again, think about something like where you are taking a uh, cuttings of your earth and putting it in to create compost. And, oh, right, yeah. You know, Definitely. versus something that's plastic and stays plastic and never changes 2,000 years from now, you come back to it and it's still the same plastic. Yeah. You know, we talk about landfills that have diapers. Yes. You know, and I've worked for those companies that have produced those things. And I've been a part of these things. I've worked from all different types of industries. So yes. I have been a part of these contributors of these for what the environment has contributed. What I'm saying is I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm still learning about what this plant can do. But one thing I am clear about, I am not contributing to, to the opioid epidemic and we have an opioid crisis right now. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is cannabis is not an entrance drug. It's an exit drug from pharmaceuticals and narcotics. And I am using it for my patients. So you're saying that cannabis can deter, per oh, I guess a person, that, like you said, we have an epidemic with the, uh, his whole rise of like heroin now. Worse. You know, worse, right. So you're saying that that could be, Absolutely. I guess. It can be reduced significantly. And what I'm also saying is that cannabis kills nobody. We okay. can't say that about heroin or any of these synthetic drugs. And what is also happening is that we have people, addiction is an illness, and right. illness needs to be treated with compassion. Okay, but how does that, okay, now, because I know for a heroin addict, they usually use... Um, methadone. Methadone to get which them Which is off. a synthetic, right. which is another I, synthetic. It sure is, right. And then now they have another new synthetic kid on the block, I forgot which the is Suboxone. Yeah, yeah, I heard that was dangerous. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's another criminal activity that they started. I am, I am convinced... It's just replacing one synthetic with another Absolutely. synthetic with another synthetic. And synthetics kill folks. Overdose so, occurs with synthetics. Overdose does not occur with cannabis. So are you saying, okay, because I know a, a heroin user, they go through a violent withdrawal. So yes. the cannabis would replace, like, I guess, yes. the nutrients yes. necessary and what to... I, more than what it is, is that... You bring up a very good point about the opioids and cannabis use, and this is facts. In the states where legalization has occurred, we have a decrease of opioid consumption right. by 25% within two years. Okay. And more, more than 35% within three to five years. So what we're seeing is that also, if you are using cannabis with your opioids, you're able to decrease your opioid use. So let's say you were on 40 milligrams mm -hmm. within a week, I see people decreasing their dosages by 10 milligrams or more and their other prescription medications. And in turn, their quality of life is improving. Mm -hmm. This is a chain reaction. Right. You know, somebody didn't get sick like this overnight. It's not like somebody had an injury and they lost a limb. And all because of the cannabinoids replacing. Slowly. I'm and I, yeah. I really believe people have a deficiency and if you are able to replenish this deficiency mm -hmm. with this you are healing right, right and, and i truly believe you need the thc because a lot of people talk about thc and cbd and i want to touch upon that as okay. well because cannabis has over 80 different cannabinoids okay okay and the spectrum is thc which is the most psychoactive which gets you the high as people talk about it okay and CBD, which is non-psychoactive, and a lot of people relate it to the inflammation and healing, but in my eyes, THC, and I say this, Dr. Uma says THC is the healing cannabinoid. 
Oh, you okay. need the healing cannabinoid, THC. Okay. THC is what actually works with the receptors. CBD works with how it's synthesized in our body. So they work differently. This is why you need the whole plant. The whole plant is needed. Right. Not just bits and pieces of it. Right, not to be separated or cut up. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So let me ask this question. So earlier you said that it's not for everybody. So what would determine now? Because, you know, they made a joke in California about a guy. He broke his thumb and he wouldn't get his medical card. You know, I mean, they made all kind of, when they, when they first legalized it, you know, people were getting like, oh, man, my, you know, oh, I, I stubbed my toe. I need a medical marijuana card. I mean, what? I guess I'm trying to say is uh, what would determine if a patient would need it or not, you know? Very good question. In my practice, um, I see patients over the age of 18, mm -hmm. and I see patients with a chronic condition. So chronic is established as any medical condition that you've had for over three months and you've tried some type of treatment. Okay, okay. I usually use six months as my cutoff. Okay. Most of my patients have had a medical condition that has been around for much longer. And this is not just uh, I, I stubbed my toe right. or I hurt my thumb. Uh, my patients have a condition and they have medical records that support it, saying that they've been seen for a doctor or they've had some type of treatment. And I trust my patients. There's no reason not to trust okay. the patient. Um, in response to about somebody that hurts your thumb. If you hurt your thumb or broke your finger, you go to the emergency room, mm -hmm. what do they throw at you first? Oh yeah, all kind of pain pills, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. All kind of like. They don't say, well, um, have we done, they say, here's your prescription for your pain pills, we're right. gonna cast you, or what's the other thing? Go and get your Tylenol or Advil, right? Those right. are all available legally, yeah. and they're available over the counter. Absolutely. And guess what? Those pills kill you. Yeah, they do. People die yeah. from Tylenol and Advil. Yeah. To okay? me, and they're legal. Yeah. And yeah. they're available over... And I told you about cannabis, right? How many people has cannabis killed? Zero. Right, right. So am I going to be saying to somebody, if I had a choice, to say, maybe try some topical cannabis on it, or maybe even consume it versus taking a pill? Right, so right, because they now they're trying to use it versus psychology, but it actually, yeah. I mean, let's be, be to... real. I mean, okay. we are so into a knee jerk reflex that we're ready to give our child Tylenol or Advil mm -hmm. in a knee jerk, right? Yeah, not a doubt in the mind, and you can get it. Child has a fever, let's give him some Advil, right? Yeah, if that doesn't work, supplement it with the Tylenol, right? Or ibuprofen, or yeah, do we say let's wait, hydrate the child, let's see what goes. We are all about, here's a pill, here's a quick fix for everything. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, good point, good point, wow. Yeah, I, I, wow, I didn't look at it that way. Yeah, that is. I think we're planting seeds, and that's how I look at this. This mm -hmm. is a journey, and it's about educating. Absolutely. And, and we're doing it, and I really appreciate you doing this um, and asking questions and demanding like you're saying well it's, it's a new day you know like and i want to definitely show the importance of like because i said like i said cleveland they they i was like wow they they really missed the mark you know and all because like you said and i don't think it wasn't because they weren't educated they just didn't want to vote or they wanted to, they were like oh you know the voting doesn't work and just i mean there's all kind of stuff out there but but i think you know, this is not just about cannabis we're talking. I think we're trying to change the fact that people awaken yourselves. You have a due diligence. If mm. you want change, um, make your vote count. Get, right. get registered. Get involved. You know, don't just sit back and wait for things to happen. Right, absolutely. And, and get involved and uh, find out. And, you know, if you don't have to be the person that has to know it all, um, um, we want people to get involved. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, back to the uh, medical journals. Oh, oh no, he's good. Oh, wait. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. The mics only pick us up. Okay. So yeah, we you know. Uh, um, back to the medical. Because uh, some might say some of the medical journals. I'm sure you got doctors out there who are being bought and sold by you know the same industries that we talked about, and they might put out 
information by the other peer review doctors that agree with or being bought and sold. What do you say to that? Because I mean, I'm sure I've there's. I've been there. Okay. I've been part of the research. You know, research. Med, there's certain medicines that are very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying medicines are not needed. Let me make that very clear. Okay. We're not saying that. What I'm saying is that the pharmaceuticals, we are so knee-jerk into a pill society. Mm -hmm, right. You know, there's a pill. When I think of family practice, okay, and I always say this, the party pack of five, the average patient, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Blood pressure pill, yep. diabetes pill, right. cholesterol pill, something for their reflux, something for their anxiety or depression. This is just, just to name five. Right, yeah. Never mind what they get over the counter. And this is my concern right now, is that people are on too many pills Let's stop and look at some of the pills people are on and see, is this really needed? And what is it doing? I mean, when we've got 80-year-old patients that are being admitted for detox programs, that's insane. You know, we've got the seniors that are falling down because they're over-medicated and falling down because of the pills that they're on. Well, that brings me to my, my next question, Doctor, because I've heard rumors that, you know, being here in Georgia, we're... we're, we're uh, part of the tobacco state, you know, the, the tobacco families, and mm -hmm. that uh, rumored that they're one of the biggest uh, um, people that want to keep marijuana. You know, I guess they, I've heard that people, you know, they don't want the competition. They don't. They're afraid that if they tobacco start tobacco kills, cannabis is obviously do it, it does kill, but it makes them money. You know, we're talking. I mean, so I guess what I'm asking is I, some of the lists of the, 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 the people pushing against it. I mean, obviously, it sounds like the big corporations, the oil, the, the tobacco. People are adults. Everybody has a right to do what they want to do. Okay. All right. I mean, um, alcohol is out there. Tobacco True, is yeah. out there. And these are things that are legal, right? Yeah. I mean, we have cars, right? We get in our cars. Those can be dangerous to us, right? That's, true, That's a yeah. vehicle, you operate it. Now, do we have guidelines and do we teach people appropriateness? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'm not downgrading everybody to say that cannabis is the only thing. I'm just saying, let's just get educated about cannabis. Absolutely. And, and let's tell the truth. Let's tell the truth about cannabis and that this should be an option. That's all Absolutely. I'm requesting, is that their need for education, that we, let's understand, let's get our heads out of the sand. Mm -hmm. You know, the writing is on the wall. Legalization is going to happen. So let's okay. get people educated. Let's get standardization. Let's make it safe so that we can get our medicine tested at laboratories. Let's all start speaking the same language so that we can have uh, labels so that you know somebody could look at a label and say this is what I'm looking at this okay. is what I need to see and I'm making it very clear these are the three things I want I want education for all healthcare providers I want more laboratories I want a label and how do we do that we need the American Medical Association to mandate mm. that every healthcare provider needs to be educated about this we need doctors that are certified in this specialty Right. and have a specialty of it. We need ISO labs so that if your blood glucose is 79 somewhere else, it better be 79 in China or in Georgia. So mm. the numbers are the same. And that we have a label so that you could look at a label and say one serving, three tablespoons, that's what we're talking about. Right, if right. it's got 10% THC, it has 10% THC. If it has 10% CBD, it has 10%. Whatever we're talking, it's the same language. Mm -hmm. I want people to understand. If you say somebody is five foot, you understand what five foot means. Right. If you say 100 pounds, you know what 100 pounds looks like. That's right. So the language is the same. Unify it. Educate people. And the only way is, you know, I'm not a politician, but I'm learning. I have to become a little bit of a politician now we all do. to yeah. speak out and say, you know, what are my rights? What are the patient's rights? Mm -hmm. And when I know my patients, I can speak about this. When my patients tell me I am afraid to talk to my primary care doctor about this. Right. That's sad. That is sad. 
What do you think is causing that? I mean, because they're like... afraid. They're afraid what their doctor is going to do. They're afraid about being cut off. They're afraid of it being documented into their insurance, that not being able to get insurance. They're afraid of their children's being taken away. I mean, this goes oh, way wow. deeper than yeah. I can get into it right now. Right, and I don't want to sound naive, but yeah, just by asking, I mean, it could create this whole Pandora's Absolutely. box? Absolutely. Oh, wow. People are losing their children because they are on this medicine. Right, right. Oh, wow. But they, you know, people can be on 15 different pills and five of them are for psychiatric illnesses. And we're okay with that. Uh-huh, that's right. There are so many things out there that are available in our closets, in, accessible that could harm us. Mm -hmm. Okay, we still take precaution. We still have rules and regs that we have to follow, but we have to get educated about it. Mm -hmm. Wow, I said a lot, Dr. Uma. Um, yeah, we're definitely gonna have to, uh, okay, we're doing good on time. Um, Because we talk about the education, um, I think one of the things that we have to bring it to the forefront of, I guess, debates, public forums, you know, how do we get it, uh, I mean, I know this is one medium, but how do we get it, um, you know, like, you know, you got Hillary and Trump that have their discussions, how do we get this to the forefront of, I guess, I think what we're doing, like, I mean, everybody out there that's listening to us today, mm -hmm. I want them to understand that they make a difference. Each one of you makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Each one of you counts. And understand how important you are. And this is your opportunity, and especially this year, folks. Especially this year. Especially this year. Now, do we have a, a memorandum going, or I guess uh, another opportunity in Georgia? Because I know last year or the year before, it was some year that we kind of missed the ball on it. So... How often do these laws come up again? And I, hopefully Cleveland, they'll get their opportunity again. And I think it's, this is where uh, I think we need Sharon Raver and the uh, attorney people and the other law people to address some of those issues and give you some updates on that. Okay, okay. Well, we definitely have to uh, have Sharon come on and uh, definitely talk about that because, yeah, we need to know when this is happening, you know, because a lot of times they pass legislation and people don't know about it. Right. You know. And I think um, this is where I feel that divide and conquer. Right, you know, absolutely. We don't need to all be masters. We can all have different people that can take bits and pieces because ultimately it's us working together that's going to make the change. Absolutely. absolutely. Nobody can do this alone. Mm. Now, that's interesting that you say that. Um, do we have, I guess, because you say... There's so many uses with marijuana, and I guess it would be hard for just one person to, I guess, you know, educate and deal with so many avenues. I mean, do we have different people in different sections, I guess, categories, dealing with I different issues? I think we have, um, well, on a medical level, uh -huh. um, we have two organizations, which I'm a part of which is the Society of Cannabis Clinicians and the American Academy of Cannabinoid Medicine. Okay. A lot of people don't even know that these organizations exist. Right, right, right? yeah. So these two organizations are out there. Um, and again, I'll repeat them for you, is the Society of Cannabis Clinicians okay. and the American Academy of Cannabinoid Medicine that's out there. And these organizations uh, are out there educating. Mm -hmm. There's also organizations like Patients at a Time um, that are putting on education seminars. And of course, Normal, the National Organization for Reform of Marijuana Laws, that's out there trying to do their part in their different areas. Um, there's organizations like Women's Grow that I'm a part of that okay. try to get people in their community. And it's not just women. Um, okay. You know, there's uh, Americans for Safe Access that are out there that are getting information. Um, and again, find out what's in your community. Okay. And I think... Um, and these have, are all... Now, this is just Georgia or is this nationwide? 
These are all nationwide, nationwide, okay, nationwide good. things I'm talking about. Okay. And these are things that I feel like there's so much out there that I learn about through my patients and through you folks. Mm -hmm. So that let's just keep it going. Let's keep on getting to where people can say, hey, look, you know, um, I can take this area and find out what are the resources mm -hmm. or what's going on in this community. And I will update you, you know, if it's weekly, monthly, what's happening. Like, like I said, this Carlston Clarkston event that just passed with the $75 fine that people need to know about. You right, know, right. Like, how did that happen in that city? How do we make it happen in other cities? How do we make it, you know what I'm saying? Right, this right. is like, Good point. it happened in one place. So again, don't have to recreate the wheel. Like I look at this as that we have a wheel. All we're doing is adding a spoke and we're calling it cannabis, folks. Right, absolutely. Um. Now, what organization, I guess, uh, I guess they had to go before the House legislation in Clarkston. I know they have. Again, you're asking questions like, I really don't know what the legal okay. process is. Um, and I'm glad because, again, that's why I rely on the lawyers and the politicians and other people. Okay, okay. And, and I want to, again, say I need the politicians to let me practice medicine. Right, And not right, let absolutely. them get in my way of taking care of patients. And I really, really have issues. I have real issues with people telling me how to practice medicine. And why is it? Well, that's why, I mean, I'm glad you say, you know, everything is politics, politics is everything. As a doctor, you have to get it involved in it too, you know, so mm -hmm. that you don't have people, trying non-doctors dictating to you how to, you know. Take care of my patients. Right. And practice medicine. And my question to the lawmakers is, does one's cancer go away? because you're in a different state. That's a good point, right? Does your illness go away because you're in a different state? Mm -hmm. Does your child that has that seizure disorder illness go away because you've moved them from one state to another? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good argument. That's, that's I, I mean, yeah, that, I mean. Why um, should your zip code dictate your medical care? Right. Hmm. That's a good point. Um, wow. Yeah, we definitely need to get. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. It's, yeah, so, it's yeah, overwhelming. It's yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. And um, I am out there speaking out as much as I can. Okay. And I practice in Massachusetts. My clinic is called Uplifting Health and Wellness in Natick, Mass. And our website is Total Healthcare THC. Okay. Uh, so Total for the record, it is THC okay. com. Yeah. Now for the record, so it is legal in Boston. That's in Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, we have medical marijuana. Okay. Um, Massachusetts um, was one of the states where they passed it in January of 2012. Oh. But we did not have dispensaries open till last year, 2015. Okay, okay. Okay. And now we have a total of six dispensaries in Massachusetts. Okay. But again, there's no consistency. It's not that people, uh, patients can go and get product consistently. Oh. What you have available today might not be available later today. What you have available today is not available next time you go there. What you have in form of edibles is not there. Not all, this, there is no consistency. Well, how does, uh, I guess, Colorado and California keep their consistency going? Well, again, they have people that are able to produce it. And this is oh. where, you know, different Massachusetts is seed to sale. What that means is like, if you are it, you will have to grow it from seed and you will be the person that actually makes the product and you are the person that actually sells the product at your store. Mm. So it's seed to sale versus there's other systems that have where one person will just grow it. Yes. One person will make the products and one person will actually sell it. Mm. And so different states, and this is how different states apply for licenses. There will be people that do cultivation licenses. One will be dispensary licenses. One will be actually making the products. So there's different licenses. Right. So it sounds like to me the states that are holding out really, I mean, they're really depending on the federal, the feds to keep the, the funding. I think they're waiting for, and I'm hoping and praying, you know, uh, to meet the president 
to let him understand that this is what needs to get done. And that's another factor. We need to de-schedule, folks. D-E, schedule, not R-E, not reschedule it. And that's a huge difference, okay? Mm. We do not, I repeat, we do not want it placed in any other schedule. Because okay. right now, I, it is in Schedule 1. Right. There is talk about it being placed in Schedule 2. or No. But no. again, you're looking, at, you're looking at doctors and scientists that have to categorize these things. Well, this is the thing. We have tobacco and alcohol, okay, right. that we tax it. Mm -hmm. If I have a choice, I want people to understand I do not like it in the same sentence as tobacco and alcohol, but tax it then. Tax it mm. and regulate it like you would tobacco or alcohol. Okay, okay. Standardize it. Now, okay, and that's a good question. Tobacco and alcohol, what are, what are they categorized as? They're I mean, not. They're not in any schedule. Oh, okay. They're just tax. Just tax, okay. It's just, that's what I'm saying. That's why there's a lot, there's a movement about putting it as tobacco and alcohol and having it just like that so that, you know. And now, can, now, now obviously, you're, you're for that movement, right? Yes. Now, are there any advocates for marijuana that's against that? I mean, I was against no. oh. it originally, and there are people against that too because they look at it that this should be just as a plant that you should be able to grow like you would your tomatoes in your backyard. Okay, so now we're talking. So now we got both sides of people for marijuana, but the, the, I mean, without the solidarity, don't, the, don't you see that as a type of congestion, kind of Absolutely. like a counter yeah. I mean, productive again, movement? My thing is that if I want to grow this plant in uh -huh. my backyard for my consumption, I should be able to do whatever I dag on please. Right? right? It's my consumption, it's my yard, it's my plant. Right. If I decide to take this plant and to do something else with it, i.e. bring it to somebody else or to sell it, right. then I want it tested, I want a label put on it. Right, but how can we get, I guess, the other uh, advocates on the same page? I mean, it sounds like, yeah, that, that could be a hold up too. If it is, I mean, there's, this is why I'm saying get more laboratories, be able to take your medicine, go have it be able to be tested, have everybody. I mean, people are now able to go to a laboratory. They are even able to check their finger glucose, right? Right. So, what, 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 okay, so what, the other advocates, what are some of the arguments that they, they don't want it to be labeled like marijuana and pot? You know, they, they I mean, I'm sorry, marijuana and, I mean, Cannabis. cigarettes and alcohol. alcohol. I mean, what is their, I mean, do they, what, what is their argument against it? I mean, it's not putting well, they want to put it in a schedule along with other drugs. And that means testing it and, again, delaying the process. Right, exactly. And then it gets into big pharma's hands again. Right. This is, again, ultimately what I'm saying is this plant has killed nobody, folks. Right. It has killed nobody. It has been around for thousands of years. I'm originally from India. It has been around in the Ayurvedic books. It has been in history. The Egyptians, every culture has used this. It has been called cannabis. It's been called different things. It's been in the Bible. It's mm -hmm. the anointing oils have cannabis in it. Mm. We know about this plant. I am telling you, and you could see it, it should be a first line option. I have seen years. My average age is over 50 in my practice. Mm -hmm. This is actually getting people healed, not getting them high. Right, so you've actually, and you have documentations of Absolutely. patients getting, well, I don't see what the problem is, if, especially if you have the documentation. We have to educate and have people understand. <coughs> it's happening, but it's not happening fast enough. Mm. And it's because not happening fast enough just because of limited resources. Like you said, in Massachusetts, you got limited dispensaries. It's, again, and I think it's very political. I mean, we've known about the system. Why is not every medical school and why mm -hmm. is not every healthcare provider know about the endocannabinoid system? I'd like some answers. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if we took a poll right now of all healthcare providers, I will bet you less than 10% of 
of the population of healthcare providers know that there is a system known as the endocannabinoid system in right, your body. Absolutely. Now, how did you learn about it? I learned about it in a very sad way because I lost my mother right. four years ago. And about a year prior to that is when I saw a TV program about how cannabis was being used in Israel mm. for lung cancer, COPD, and asthma. Oh, wow. It did not compute to me. Why would you be having somebody smoking weed when they can't breathe? That's how I looked right. at it. Right, okay. And as a doctor, that's exactly, like, you can't breathe and you're gonna have them smoke something. And we are ingrained about the concept of smoking. Right. How smoking is bad for you. Mm -hmm. And never mind smoking, but smoking cannabis, weed, yes. marijuana. Why would that be good for you? Mm. And that's where my curiosity began. Oh. And that curiosity led me to understanding the truth. And I became aware that this was not about evidence-based medicine. Mm. This was about politics and Absolutely. greed and racism. And that's when I became to understand that I had to speak out. I had to speak Absolutely. to everybody. And when I first got into this, I was not as bold as I am today. Right. I, w I was not as bold when I spoke to you over a year ago as right, I am right. today. Yes. And I feel so passionate about it. Here it is now, four and a half years since my mother is gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say that I'm out there and I'm out there as often and in any place. And I'm proud to say that my patients are now out there speaking Absolutely. for me. All right. And there are people out there doing my work. So I'm proud to say that people are doing it. Okay. Well, we're down to, oh, yeah, we're Time's almost up. You want to uh, give some information before we go? Sure. Uh, I want to say I'm Dr. Umadana Balin. I'm in Natick, Massachusetts. The name of my clinic is Uplifting Health and Wellness. Uh, our phone number is 508-444-2324. Uh, my website, which is under still progress, is called TotalHealthCareTHC.com. I like that. Again, that's TotalHealthCareTHC.com, and I totally believe that you need the THC, which is the healing cannabinoid. And I state that cannabis is not the entrance drug, it's the exit, exit drug from pharmaceuticals and narcotics. And a book will be coming out very soon right. that we're working on, and it's called Cannabis, the Exit Drug. All right. All right. We're going we're gonna to do thank an interview on that. Thank you very you. much. All right. Thank you. God bless you.